Dear students, I am Dr. Srinivas Goli, Assistant Professor in Jawaharlal Nehru University. Today, under MHRD UGC EPATH Sala program, under a paper called Population Structure and Characteristics, I am teaching a module on gender based violence. The violence concept, as WHO defines as, violence is the intentional use of physical force, power, threatened or actual against oneself, another person or against a group or a community, which either results in or as a high likelihood of resulting in injury, death, psychological harm, underdevelopment. Or deprivation. If this is committed against a woman or a man by the opposite sex, is called gender-based violence. Gender-based violence often synonymously used with women's violence, but violence against a man by a woman is equally harmful than a violence against men by a woman. So, if this both includes, is called as gender based violence. There are four modes in which violence may be implicated are physical, sexual, psychological attack, and deprivation. For example, if you look at this particular diagram, which basically highlights to the two important violences, physical and sexual, which is mostly controlled by power. The violence obtained also leads to secondary processes of abuse, particularly using intimidation, using emotional abuse, using isolation, using children, abuse, using male privilege, using economic abuse, using coercive and threatening threats. Three subtypes according to the victim perpetrator relationship the violence is basically classified into three subtypes according to the victim perpetrator relationships. The one is self directed violence. This includes violence that a person inflicts upon himself or herself. It includes suicide thoughts, attempted suicide, or completed suicide, self abuse, or self mutilation. If it is either committed by either sex, is called gender violence or if it is committed by by male it is a male violence if it committed by female it is a female violence the interpersonal violence the violence inflicted by another individual or a small group of individual includes family intimate partner violence and community violence often gender based violence is is considered to be the interpersonal violence, more synonymously used as an interpersonal violence, but other two violences also important when we are dealing with gender based violence. The another form is collective violence. Collective violence inflicted by larger groups, states, organized political groups, military groups, terrorist organization, include social violence, economic violence and political violence. So, this also often creates a gender based situation for gender based violence. But predominantly, if we in the literature, if you look at the literature, we have three types of violences which obtain termed as gender based violences. The one is domestic violence, then intimate partner violence. 
Domestic violence basically is the violence committed by any of the family member towards is either male or female. Sex. The intimate partner violence is the violence committed by the life partner or spouse, one spouse towards another spouse. Here these pictures will de depict you the different forms of violence. If you look at the first picture where a male beating wife through a thread and if you look at the second picture where a male is kicking his wife through leg and in the third a male hitting a female on her face like in the second row first figure well where a female hitting is the male partner and in the second row the right side figure where both male female towing things each other that's also interspousal violence intimate partner violence violence towards each other so the violence can be mutual between each other or violence against women or violence against men by each of the opposite partners one in three women globally will experience are experiencing the violence during her lifetime i repeat again one in three women globally will are experiencing violence in her lifetime often at the hands of their intimate partner if you want to deal domestic violence separately and in elaborate manner the domestic violence can be defined as it means the family and intimate partner violence which also includes child abuse and abuse of elderly usually takes place in home the domestic violence can be defined as the domestic violence it means family and intimate partner violence which also includes child abuse and abuse of elderly usually takes place at home but this can be the the fact the actors of domestic violence can be anybody either husband mother in law father in law father mother brother or anybody it cannot be restricted to any single member of the household it can be any member of the household also called intimate partner abuse domestic violence one small part of domestic violence is also intimate partner abuse intimate partner violence this intimate partner violence is unlike <coughs> the domestic violence is 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 the factor in in this particular violence is is the spouse the opposite spouse when wife was beaten by husband or husband beaten by wife physical or sexual exploitation of husband on wife or wife on husband is considered to be the intimate partner violence the it is one of the most common forms of gender based violence and often characterized by long term partners of abusive behavior and control gender based violence gender based violence is broader than domestic violence gender based is a type of violence which is directed against a person on the basis of gender or sex while both males and females are subject to the gender based violence women and girls are the main victims gender based violence means any act or threat act threats of act of violence based on gender that results in likely to result in physical sexual or psychological harm or suffering of to women also includes all forms of violence against women over the entire life cycle female feticides female infanticide etc gender based violence violence can also includes sexual violence domestic violence emotional and psychological abuse forced prostitution trafficking for forced labor or prostitution sexual exploitation and sexual harassment harmful traditions practices 
example female genital mutilation and forced marriages discriminatory practices based on gender violence is bigger threat to the health of women of age 15 to 49 than the any other cancer malaria or traffic accidents are combined together so it is a big socio not only social problem but also an health problem the intimate partner violence is another important concept under gender based violence any behavior within an intimate relationship that causes physical psychological sexual harm to those in the relationship results in intimate partner violence this includes acts of physical aggression psychological abuse forced intercourse and other forms of sexual coercion and various controlling behaviors such as isolating a person from their family friends restricting their movements etc in a way intimate partner violence is a major subset of domestic violence and gender based violence the the gender based violence also operates in a cyclic phases it is also important to learn uh, the gender uh, study the gender based violence in a life course approach and in the life cycle approach if you look at the life cycle approach of gender based violence it has six phases of the life cycle the first phase is the prenatal in the prenatal phase of life the violence includes sex selective abortion battering include pregnancy and coercive pregnancy in the second phase which is infancy includes female infanticides emotional and physical abuse gender uh, differential access to food and medical care of girl and infants of course the third phase is childhood which includes child marriages genital mutilation sexual abuse by family members and strangers differential access to food and medical care and child prostitution especially if you look at the in childhood gender based violences child marriage is one of the important problem in india one in three child marriages in the world as occurring in india for every one hour there are 150 150 child marriages happen around india child marriage is an huge issue of which is of 10 results into conflicts and violence because child marriage generally leads to lower autonomy lesser empowerment lower status of women which even leads to women dif- makes dif- women difficulty in complaining about the gender based violence and child marriages results into the the lower it's not only child marriage is not only a moral issue but a, a human right issue but is a huge economic issue at the adolescent phase which includes dating and courtship of violence violence in the dating and companionship economically coerced sex sexual abuse in the workplace rape sexual harassment forced prostitution trafficking of women is some of the important forms of gender based violence in during adolescent phase india also one of the place where is the most unsafe for the adolescent girls in the world in most of the indian cities are considered to be very unsafe for the adolescent girls in hard hours in the third phase of uh, fifth phase of the gender sorry fifth phase of the gender based violence is reproductive phase which in often described as 15 to 49 years which includes abuse by intimate partners abuse by other family members often mother in law or father in law or or other brothers of the partner and often often even mother and father most important abuses during reproductive period includes marital rape dowry abuse and murders and partner homicide psychological abuse sexual abuse in the workplace and sexual harassment the last phase of the gender based violence includes abuse of widows and elderly abuse 
India, particularly if you take Indian example, the India is one of the fastest growing economy and where female life expectancy is higher than male, which often leads to left behind females. And left behind females often face a while while opposition from the the neighbors and the other community members. The consequence of gender based violence is one important criteria need to be studied. The consequence of gender based violence is very important. Gender based violence lead to many fatal outcomes, non fatal outcomes. The fatal outcomes includes homicide, suicide, maternal mortality and other important uh, uh, the life threatening in, in problem. Non fatal outcomes include physical injury, functional impairment, permanent disability, poor susceptibility to health. The chronic diseases also sometimes it is also result from the gender based violence. Most important is the mental health issues or psychological issues which is often comes out of gender based violence. Post traumatic stress, doc, direct depression is one of the important mental and psychological issues of, comes out of the gender based violence. Negative health behaviors is also one of the important outcome of gender based violence which is smoking using drugs, habituating to the drugs, sexual risk behavior, physical inactivity and the other important uh, risky health behaviors. Gender based violence also leads to a lot of reproductive problems, reproductive, especially reproductive health problems. Unwanted pregnancy is obtained is one of the important outcome of marital rape and it often leads to the contacting the disease like ST, STDs and HIV. Often the marital rape or sexual attack also takes women into the problems like gynecological or obstetric problems, unsafe abortion, pregnancy complication, miscarriages, low birth weight or pelvic injuries or so on. The, therefore, the gender based violence is very important public health issue and also socio economic issue. If you look at some of the empirical results from my own survey, it reveals that any violence is causing live birth complication more than the women who are not facing any violence. But often we have faced lot of problem in measuring gender based violence particularly in a patriarchal society like India. If you look at state level statistics from national family health survey, we have more reporting from the developed state like South India, like Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra compared to the states like Bihar, Uttar Pradesh. Therefore, we it is very difficult for us to to measure the actual level of gender violence. The more empowered women are reporting more compared to those women actually facing them more. Those women who are facing the gender based violence more, they obtain even not realizing this as their violence and their it is a violation of their basic rights. Because lack of knowledge on the issue, lack of knowledge on the legal sanctions, lack of knowledge on the legal rights, they often fa fail to report or realize the gender based violence. For example, in the same National Family Health Survey, there are the questions about the wife justifying the wife beating. When women were asked that whether if your wife, if your husband is beat you, the offer it is justified. Then 97 percent women says that if I do mistake, my husband can beat me. So this kind of uh, the answers will tell us that how far women are empowered 
or or to know that the gender based violence is a crime and they are for example if you look at percentage of currently married women in age group 15 to 40 who have experienced spousal violence ever in past 12 months by type of violence in from the national family health revealed that emotional violence in past 12 months it is 11% and in lifetime it is 15% this is also in spite of under reporting these are the figures we have and in the physical violence we have as i has 35% in the lifetime and 21% in the past 12 months in the sexual violence we have 10% in in the lifetime and 7% in the past 12 months the physical or sexual violence we have 35 37% in the lifetime and 24% in in the past 12 months the physical and sexual or emotional violence is 39% in the lifetime compared to 27% in the last two months so all this shows that in spite of a reporting problem we have high prevalences of of intimate partner violence or domestic violence in india the is another figure which shows that percentage of currently married women aged 15 to 49 who have experienced emotional violence by their husbands the first is threatened to hurt or harm her someone close to her it says that the in the past 12 months almost 3% and ever it's 5% insulted or made her feel bad about herself this in the past 12 months it is 6% in the in the lifetime it is 8% humiliated her in front of others in the past 12 months it is 9% in the lifetime it 12% this also indicate that there is a huge intraspousal tensions and violence against the women how we can overcome the gender based violence how we can uh, remove the gender based violence the main important tool for removing gender based violence is gender mainstreaming empowering women increasing women autonomy building women agency these are the gender mainstreaming includes mainstreaming of gender perspective in the process of assessing implications for women and men of any planned action including legislation programs in any area and at all the levels it is a strategy for making the concerns and experiences of women as well as of men in integral part of design implementation monitoring and evolution of policies and programs in all political economic and social spheres so that women and men benefit equally and the inequality is not perpetuated the basic principles of gender mainstreaming is, is according to un division of advancement of women and principles include advocate accountability mechanism for main monitoring progress need to be established the initial identification of issues and problems across the areas of activity should should be such that gender differences and disparities especially gender based violence be diagnosed assumption that issues or problems are neutral for gender equality perspective should be never be made gender analysis should always be carried out especially the measuring gender based violence is a basic task clear political will and allocation of adequate resources for measuring monitoring gender based violence is very important gender mainstreaming re also requires that efforts to made broad broaden up women's equitable participation at all levels of decision making is very important which which allow women to come out and report the gender based violence L making legal system more friendly and women friendly is important mainstreaming does not replace the need for targeting women specific policies and program and positive legislation not does it do away with the need of gender units of focal points so gender based violence is a social psychological health economic issue and political issue too so overcoming gender based violence needs first measuring it correctly 
and taking appropriate legal and social in legal steps and so initiating social institution to overcome such violence is very important.